Hi guys, I'm back. I'm back. And welcome to my channel Science in Science Fiction. Today I will present to you possibly one of the coolest things you have ever seen. Science fiction is becoming science. We could not have thought about this 20 years ago. But yet here it is. Uh, a camera that actually films with a trillion frames per second and can actually see the individual pulses of light as they hit an object. So now we can actually track with supercomputing, track the pulses of light and predict the trajectories. And by predicting the trajectories, see objects or not actually see but uh, foresee. We can foresee objects before they actually appear in front of the camera. So we will know what actually happens before it happens. And that's amazing. The application are limitless. And when you think about it at a broader scope, technology these days has become so powerful where the human body becomes obsolete. So we got hearts, pacemakers that can replace our hearts and probably work better than our hearts. We can perhaps in 10 years we can create a bionicle eye based on the technology from this camera that could actually see things before they come into our visual line of sight and bunch of other things that are simply amazing and my own opinion and just take this as my own opinion is that we are already becoming a race of cyborgs because in today's world you cannot actually do anything without technology you cannot do your job without a phone and without a notebook without a computer you can't even get your money without uh, basic information uh, technology information because you can't, gotta go to an ATM and get your money out of the ATM so you need something you need the technology in uh, growing food you need technology in building you need technology in everything in fact those tall buildings those tall skyscrapers they cannot be built without computer calculating all the masses but let me just stop rambling and put this clip it was here at MIT in the early 1960s that Professor Harold Edgerton pushed the boundaries of high-speed photography. He was my Uncle Harold. When I was a kid, he used to show me the coolest pictures, like this famous example, a 2,000-mile-an-hour bullet rendered seemingly motionless. Well, 60 years later, a team of scientists here at MIT have outdone my Uncle Harold. This, this is actually inspiration for our own work. The only difference is that Edgerton used a bullet made of copper and lead, whereas we used bullets of light. They've created a camera so fast, it slows to a crawl the fastest moving thing in the universe, light. The camera has a resolution of a trillionth of a frame per second, and so we can actually observe light as it goes through the scene. A trillion frames per second? Mm -hmm. At that speed, a flash of light on a still life is transformed into a journey. We'll see light coming in by its reflection off the floor. Oh. As the light wave propagates, it'll hit the surface of the fruit and we'll see that light up. And then only after delay will you see the light hit the wall behind it, and only after another delay will you actually see the shadow behind it. Wait, so the shadow doesn't appear instantaneously? That's right, because the wall is farther away, it takes light longer time to reach it. Uh, so let me show you an another example. It may seem unremarkable at first, a soda bottle filled with water. But then, a flash. So you see the pulse of light entering from the left? This pulse is actually a packet of photons, particles of light. And we can see its energy front sweeping across the bottle from left to right. And eventually the pulse will hit the cap and emit a bright flash. Just think how fast it was traveling. About 600 million miles per hour. And how long did that event take in real life? It took a billionth of a second for light to go from one end to the other. So an event that took a nanosecond it has been stretched to about 20 seconds. 20 seconds. So that's that's a lot of stretching. This is super slow motion. Put another way, if you were to film that iconic apple with this camera and made a movie of the bullet entering the picture, going through the apple and out the other side, it would take about a year to watch this entire movie. This would take a year to watch? That's right, yes. Oh, I recognize this setup. So how exactly does this super fast camera slow things down? We shine laser light uh, inside the bottle. You can actually see it looks like a continuous ray of light, but it's not. 
The laser light emits a train of pulses, very fast. The object is to capture just one of these pulses as it enters the bottle. To get this image, they actually have to take 500 separate pictures, each just photographing a narrow slice of the scene. The camera looks at the scene through this mirror system, which rotates, and as the uh, mirror moves, they record a different slice of the bottle at a time. So in order to get a complete picture, you need 500 slices of it. Exactly. But how do you capture a single burst of light if you have to film it 500 times? So what we do is, we don't shine just one laser pulse. We rely on the fact that the laser is shooting out pulses periodically in time, over and over again. For each laser pulse, the camera records one line of the scene at a time. And, and the fact that each pulse looks the same as the last, that's why the finished movie looks like it's just one pulse. Yes, we stitch it all together. Taking it a step further, so for example, when you combine the camera this fast with information processing, by this long, it opens up some interesting possibilities. This camera over here can somehow see around the corner? Precisely. How does that work? Well, what we do is we take our laser beam and we shine it onto another wall. That light bounces off the wall and scatters in all different directions. Some of that light hits the mannequin. Because the camera is so fast, it can record the difference in time it takes for this path or this path. Each of the billions of paths of bounced light that reach it. So based on the fact that we know how fast light travels, we can build computer software to actually place all the light back where it came from on the object, digitally reconstructing it. After the reconstruction, it actually looks like an image of our object. Like this. <laughs> and with more processing, a 3D image. It's similar to sonar, where an image is reconstructed from reflected sound waves. It's similar, but in sonar, the object or the ground floor that you want to look at still has to be in the direct line of view of the camera. In this case, you no longer have that restriction. So it has potential use for fire and rescue, and for automobiles to detect approaching vehicles around corners. Or in medicine, visualize the inside of a person's body. I think Uncle Harold would be proud. Okay, so uh, now that the movie, the clip has ended, you can actually all see what I was talking about. And it is pretty great and the applications are also great. So I'll let you guys draw your own conclusion, but this is something that absolutely fascinates me and i'm glad that uh, i'm living in this time frame and who knows what else they will discover in 10 years so without uh, taking any more of your time rate comment subscribe if you're new please subscribe to my channel i would greatly appreciate that and have a nice day